Hello down the harmonics need to be. Um, I will put a link to that. They allow people to get on the air easy. They let people do it. Welcome to the Art of Engineering. This is going to be a very short episode compared to the last one. Um, the longer form videos don't seem to be as interesting for most people. And um, maybe watching me spend half an hour building a power supply from rewound microwave transformers is not to everybody's taste. This is the UV-10R Baofeng, Baofeng, however you want to pronounce it. And I did a video about a year ago when I purchased this radio. And the first video that I did, I gave it a green tick and said, I think it's a pretty good radio, it works really well. It's operated fine for me. And uh, a lot of people uh, agreed in the comments, but a few people piped in with, well, what about the fact that they're spectrally impure, that uh, you'll get spurious emissions and harmonics that do not meet the required suppression requirements, all that sort of stuff. So I actually reissued the video, I took it down and I edited it and I did put in the caution that uh, as radio amateurs, uh, we are beholden to the ITU regulations and also uh, license conditions in the respective country you're in. In my case, the Radio Communications Act and ACMA um, trust that radio amateurs are professionals, technically mindful people that understand their responsibilities when it comes to using transmitting and receiving equipment. And uh, if you're using this radio, um, it doesn't need to be approved. Um, provided that it operates within those requirements. And so if you've got one, um, you may be able to test its spectral purity and find that it meets the requirements and you might find that it doesn't. Now, um, the reason why this is happening is there's two reasons why this video is happening. One is that I now have a means to actually test the spectral purity because I've bought myself a tiny spectrum analyzer, a tiny SA Ultra, which allows me to test the spectrum from you know zero up to five gigahertz. And also, recently Hayden um, did a video, and um, I'll just sh show you a little excerpt of that. Access anything that sort of helps amateur radio and helps ham radio and people to get interested in ham radio is a great thing, and I think Baofeng's are definitely high up on that list. And he was discussing whether Baofeng was a good thing for the hobby or a bad thing for the hobby. And like me, he sort of came down on the side of it being good because it, um, oh God, this week. He kind of came down on the side of uh, the radio actually being a good thing for the hobby because it's a gateway drug. And most people buy this radio, use it for a little while and either decide the hobby's not for them and they chuck it in a drawer, or they chuck it in a drawer because they buy a better radio. They buy something that's got DMR, digital modes, all that sort of stuff. In that respect, it's probably not as much of an issue as, as it might be. And the other thing, of course, is that half the time there's nobody on the VHF and UHF bands, or at least that's my, been my experience of it. I mean, I'm listening to the repeater all the time, and um, I don't think I hear anybody the entire day. The only thing I hear is the automatic ident. But uh, not much happening there. Unless, of course, you go to use the Echo Link car, uh, in which case people lock you out of the repeater and you have to talk to the club captain to get yourself reinstated. Anyway, that is another story. Is this radio clean? Well, in my case, the radio is clean, but unfortunately, while I was testing it, I have the attenuator that's required, a 40 dB attenuator um, for the correct frequencies. It has the correct impedance. That was all checked on a nano VNA. It had an it was actually about 39 dB um, on the frequency that I was using it on. Hi folks, I nearly forgot to ask you, uh, if you could just uh, reach down and hit the, uh, the like and subscribe button, that would be really great because um, I'd really like Google to start buying me a beer a month like they used to. With a 50 ohm impedance. So that's all good. Plugged it in, was testing it, and found that first harmonic or the next multiple of 144 megs when I was testing it was uh, down about 50, 50, over 50 dB. It was good, it was, it was clean. You couldn't see the next one along, virtually, virtually invisible. From the short period of time that I was testing it, I could sort of see that it was gonna be okay. And on 70 centimeters, it was also clean. But then while I was testing, and I wasn't holding down the, uh, the, the uh, push to talk for like half an hour or anything like that, I was you know, just going click, click, having a look, settle, okay, here we go. While I was doing that, the radio went dead. And I thought, probably the battery, I hadn't used it for a while. So I put it on the cradle all night, 
uh, got there the next morning, turned it on, still dead. Mm. So I'm strongly suspecting the radio is trashed. There's a reason why Baofeng might be a problem, and that's that um, they are um, rubbish. You get what you pay for. Now, you might get lucky. You might buy one and use it for months, years, and it's fine. And then you'll get another one uh, that's rubbish. And that's down to quality control. And if you're within warranty, it's not a big deal if the long of the warranty. That's another big question mark for a lot of these radios and the sites you buy them on. The other thing, of course, is that Hayden was saying most recently Baofeng were a lot more reliable when it comes to spectral purity. I still don't know where he's actually come to that conclusion. It's maybe anecdotal from all the other hams that are reporting on this issue. The question has to be asked, how many hams actually do check the spectral purity of the radio that they're operating? Um, that's, that's the one question. And of course, the other one is how many are actually Baofings and how many are clones of um, and being manufactured with questionable quality control. I am now leaning towards the um, position of I don't think they're good radios and I'm not buying another one. Now, am I judging people that do buy them? Yes, I am judging. I'm judging because, look, I'm very torn, I'm very conflicted on this. I'm uh, a big fan of experimentation. I really dislike the uh, fun police when it comes to amateur radio. I really um, have a problem with people that uh, are very dismissive of new hams, people that are finding their way, and rather than stepping in and trying to assist them, they're very, very um, condescending. They speak down to them, they're very sarcastic. I don't like any of that stuff. I really hate that, in fact, because we're all in this hobby, essentially, and we've got to remember that it's a hobby, to learn um, and to have a good time, and I think to be courteous to each other. And that's where my problem with uh, the Balfings comes in, in so much as, if you are knowingly using equipment that's going to be polluting the iris spectrum, um, I don't think that's responsible. I really think that uh, we need to think about uh, um, making sure that we stick within the regulations. And um, once again, the anarchist in me sometimes has issues with this, but if we're not responsible, eventually what's going to happen is there's two things that can happen. They can start taking spectrum away from us or they can start giving us less free reign. They can start saying things like, if you want to operate commercial gear, it must have the tick of approval. Or they might actually start saying, it, all the gear that you operate has to have the tick of approval. And as a home brewer, someone who likes to build my own gear, that fills me with terror because the only thing I really enjoy about this hobby, or the main thing that I enjoy about this hobby, is making my own gear. It's not buying the store-bought stuff. Is not buying the stuff that's got the tick of approval. And after a year in the hobby now, I'm already to the point where I have a spectrum analyzer, I can check spectral purity on stuff that I build, and I'm wanting to do that, because I do want to make sure that my gear is quality, that it's working like it should. Um, when you buy one of these, you do not know that. Okay, you won't know that unless you go to the effort of actually buying yourself a tiny spectrum analyzer and then buying the attenuator that's required and then learning how to um, use the whole system as well and understand the results you're getting, etc, etc. So it's a very, very steep learning curve. So I would be saying, shell out an extra hundred bucks and buy yourself a Yaisu or um, a more known and respected brand that will have the FCC tick of approval on it, which is the American accreditation, um, which will meet... Um, Australian standards as well or oh, mostly in most countries you're in will meet the standards that are required in your own country but you need to check your own regulations there's always that caveat there because you know things can vary from country to country if you agree or disagree with what I'm saying that's fine I do like to see more people coming into the hobby I think a lot of people say that the hobby hasn't got a problem but I think it does have a problem in so much as it's not getting younger people involved and um, getting new members of the community involved in, in, in becoming hands and uh, I would like to see more people coming in. So as Hayden says, if this is a way of starting that interest or peaking that interest, that could be a really, really good thing. Now the educator in me says, okay, we're buying these radios. How about our local clubs purchase a spectrum analyzer and the attenuators that are required and we get new hands to come in and go, hey, let's check your radio. Let's see, see whether it complies. And then if it doesn't comply, we might start looking at uh, maybe creating an antenna 
that has a uh, filter on it that will um, filter out the harmonics. There's a project for a club. You might be able to find another radio for that person that they can use in the meantime um, to keep them going. This radio will provide the opportunity to learn something new. How's that for an idea? Um, I'm sure, like all videos on this, uh, on this ubiquitous radio, this is going to create some comment from all five people that watch this video. <laughs> and uh, I'm not saying uh, don't buy this. What I am saying is buy it and then when you get a chance, preferably before you transmit on it, check it to see whether it's good or bad. Now, if you're interested in the Radio Communications Act requirements for spectral purity and, and um, how low down the harmonics need to be, um, I will put a link to that original video that uh, I posted and below that video you will find links to the information that's required. And uh, if you are more interested in, in uh, that, let me know in the comment section below also and uh, I might look into doing a video on that. Um, on that area as well. Now I know a lot of you will be thinking, yeah, he's saying you got a spectrum analyzer, but he didn't. Just to uh, prove the point. Um, there is my uh, Tiny SA in ultra mode. Really happy with it. And before the radio blew up, uh, that is the 40 dB attenuator um, DC to, I think it's um, up into the gigahertz, three gigahertz. I did go to the um, trouble of getting uh, an attenuator that I could use with this uh, spectrum analyzer and uh, in an upcoming video um, what I'm going to do is because uh, I've already criticized the valve thing but I have a transmitter or in fact I've got a couple of transmitters that I've built I've built uh, a kit OzQRP or a couple of OzQRP kits and I've also built myself a 3.5 megahertz CW transmitter now the OzQRPs have been tested by um, Leon Dobbs when he was uh, making the kit and provided it's constructed properly, it should comply. But my transmitter, I haven't checked. So, you know, here is the hypocrite of the century criticizing the Baofeng and perhaps their dirty outputs when I've been using my 80 meter rig. Uh, admittedly, it's a QRP rig and for most of the time I was using it was 400 milliwatts. So my, sec my harmonics are gonna be pretty weak, but Nevertheless, it still needs to comply. So what I'm gonna do is, in an upcoming video, I'm gonna show you the uh, tiny spectrum analyzer. Um, I might actually show you a through test on the attenuator and uh, all that sort of stuff. So let me know if you're interested in any of that. Let me know what you think of the video below. And please um, like and subscribe for more of this. Hit the bell notification and 73, and I'll see you in the next episode of The Art of Engineering.